Hello and welcome to another Standard Games video. Today we're taking a look at my build of the Conspiracy Unraveler combo deck, which is designed to beat aggro decks in best of one, thanks to our many early interactive spells. And the combo is built around Conspiracy Unraveler. This 7 mana 6-6 six, six flyer says we may collect evidence 10 rather than pay the mana cost of spells that we cast. And whenever you get to cheat on mana costs in Magic, you can usually do something broken, and that's certainly the case here. To collect evidence 10, we need to all cards with total mana value 10 or greater from our graveyard and we've got some very expensive spells in this deck that we can exile to enable collect evidence and then the eventual goal is to reanimate our conspiracy on raveler using our cruelty of Gix. the third chapter can bring back a creature from any graveyard onto the battlefield under our control and then we need a breach the multiverse in hand which we can then immediately cast for free by collecting evidence 10 which is usually not too difficult even just a cruelty of Gix being a 5 mana card in the graveyard can already help and then we've often cast some other spells in the meantime or maybe discarded some expensive cards and then by casting our free breach the multiverse each player mills 10 cards and this is actually our win condition for the most part we're going to try to mill the opponent out and even though we both will have empty libraries the opponent's going to take a first draw step for their turn from an empty library resulting in them exploding before we do and then besides milling 10 cards each we also get to return a creature or planeswalker from each graveyard onto the battlefield under our control and the creature we want to get from our graveyard is actually just a four mana repository scab a 3-3 with exploit so when it enters the battlefield we may sacrifice a creature and when the scab exploits a creature we get to return an instant or sorcery from our graveyard to our hand so importantly the scab can sacrifice itself to its own exploit trigger which ends up with a scab in the graveyard once again so we can bring it back with future breach the multiverses and then the scab of course is going to get back breach the multiverse in the meantime we milled 10 cards so we likely have more expensive cards in the graveyard we can collect evidence with so once again cast a free breach the multiverse get back scab get back breach rinse and repeat until the opponent doesn't have any cards left in their library we'll also end up with a lot of creatures on the battlefield which can sometimes get the job done as well but for the most part we're just going to try to mill the opponent out so that's our game plan. To make that work, of course, we need some discard outlets to kind of prep our graveyard and put the Unraveler there so we can eventually reanimate it with our Cruelty of Gigs. So to do that, we've got four copies of Tainted Indulgence, draw two and discard for two mana. And then in the very late game, we can occasionally just draw two with it when we no longer need to discard, but that doesn't come up all that often. And the fact that this is an instant speed discard outlet can also be quite important because sometimes we cast our Cruelty of Gigs starting from chapter 2 as opposed to immediately reanimating our unraveler if we don't already have it in the graveyard and then with chapter 2 we can either find a breach the multiverse if we're missing it or if we already have it just find our tainted indulgence so we can actually discard our unraveler and then in our next turn before the third chapter from cruelty goes on the stack we want to cast our tainted indulgence so in our upkeep after untapping and that way we can discard our conspiracy unraveler and have it in the graveyard ready for chapter 3 so we can immediately bring it back and then a combo off and then besides indulgence we also have four copies of the steam core scholar three mana two two flying vigilance when it enters we draw two cards and then we discard two unless we discard an instant or sorcery or a creature card with flying which is pretty convenient since we want to be discarding our flying conspiracy on raveler now it's important to note that you're always allowed to discard a second card to the scholar's ability even if you're already discarding an instant or sorcery or a creature with flying and that can be quite relevant if you're trying to set up the collect evidence 10 on the unraveler so sometimes you'll discard on Raveler, plus maybe a Virtue of Persistence as another 7 mana card. And this can also be a useful tool against aggro, using the 2 mana Scorn to take out a creature and gain 2 life. So the flexibility here is great. Occasionally we could cast the 7 mana enchantment, but that doesn't come up all that often. It's just another expensive card that will randomly mill with Breach the Multiverse to enable our Collect Evidence. And then we have some other cheap removal spells besides a Virtue, 4 copies of Cut Down, two copies of Go for the Throat, and then two copies of Path of Peril. And this is the reason why we have a double Shattered Sanctum in the mana base as well, on the off chance that we need to cleave it. But for the most part, we're interested in taking out cheaper creatures, especially in the best of one meta game. And then we also have a one-off Deadly Cover-Up as another sweeper that can also maybe mess with the opponent's graveyard or library if we collect evidence. And even though it's only a one-off, we can always search it up with Chapter 2 from Cruelty, so we have access to it more frequently. 
and then uh, three copies of scab not a card we actively want to draw but we can always discard it with scholar or indulgence and then it's very important to have in the graveyard once we start comboing with our breach the multiverse and then a mana base also gets to play with the new Undercity Sewers, which is actually very relevant, letting us surveil one, gives us a bit of extra card selection, and can also maybe put some expensive cards in the graveyard to help us collect evidence. And then we've got a bunch more dual lands, no need for a creature land since that's not really part of our game plan, and I want to avoid tap lands where possible. And then the Abandoned Mire and Soaring City are still kind of free rolls, giving us a bit of additional utility. So yeah, that's our deck, now let's jump into some games and see how the deck does. Okay, we're on the play, and uh, our hands got most of the pieces we need. We're lacking early interaction and a third land. But uh, once we play Scholar, we get to discard Unraveler. Hopefully, Cruelty on turn 5. And then we're off to the races. I wouldn't mind finding more draw and discard effects since we also need to fill the graveyard to enable collect evidence. Opponent red-white. And we found a land, luckily, so place color. Opponent could be keeping up a lightning helix, but we're okay if they take out our 2-2. Two -two. It's going to be a reinforcements instead, so this is the Convoke deck. So Path of Peril is going to be important. Yeah, I guess we could discard Virtue and Unraveler. So we have more mana value in the graveyard for Collect Evidence. Since we're likely going to Path next turn. And then hopefully we'll have Land 5 for Cruelty. So we won't even have time to cast Virtue. All right, Case of the Gateway Express clears our Scholar. And another Unraveler of the draw. So yeah, we could Path of Peril, we could wait another turn. I think I'm fine to fire it off now if our opponent plays something along the lines of a Recruiter. They can deal quite a bit of damage next turn. And they won't even present an extra target for Path. So now we just need one more untapped land. And then I believe we can combo off. Dark Slick Shores is a tapped one, but I think we'll be okay, giving the opponent one more turn. A War Leader's Call pumps their team. Take six. And we get to untap. So yeah, cast Cruelty. Reanimate Unraveler. So we'll start from Chapter 3. And then we can cast a free Breach the Multiverse. Opponent did have a Reinforcements for two more damage. But now we don't need to worry about instant speed removal, potentially messing up our combo by removing the Scab. So get rid of Virtue and Path of Peril. Leave the Scholar on the off chance that we miss on Breach so we can still bring it back. And then we can grab the opponent's Doesn't Matter. Maybe go for Warden. So we draw to discard. Unraveler can go. And then we can use the Warden to scry if we'd like. And cast another Breach. Plenty of mana values to exile. And did we hit a scab? We did, so now we should be in the clear. On the opponent's side, it doesn't matter too much. I guess we could technically win by eventually reanimating the opponent's recruiter to give the team haste. And now we just want to make sure to sack the scab itself, so we have it guaranteed in the graveyard. So we can mill the opponent out. And uh, let's see here, one, two, and seven makes ten. So we'll just uh, make a few tokens, I guess, or we could gain life with a veteran.
technically if we were at one or two life, our opponent could still maybe make some tokens in their upkeep and kill us with War Leader's Call. But uh, we should be in the clear here. Once again, steal their veteran. Get back scab. Opponent's got 10 cards left, so one more breach will do it. But yeah, we could easily also win with damage here, thanks to the opponent's recruiter giving our team haste, which is pretty funny. And get scab. Opponent's got zero cards left. At this point it doesn't matter. Get a cut down. And pass a turn. And our opponent explodes. Sweet, on to the next one. Okay, we're on the play. And what do we think of our hand? Yeah, it's not perfect, but uh, we've got lots of draw and discard. So we're looking to draw and discard a Unraveler and then find a Cruelty of Gigs. And then we should be good to go. Opponent on a red aggro with turn on Kumano. Alright, this is going to be a tricky one, but we did find the Unraveler right away, so that helps. So now we just want interaction and a turn 5 cruelty. Scholar can also get in the way as a bit of a speed bump. Found a go for the throats, so discard Unraveler. And a Virtue is great too. So... I think it's still reasonable to play Scholar, and then next turn we can both Virtue and go for the Throat, which is more mana efficient. I still need to find Cruelty of Gig, so we want to keep digging towards that. Even though Virtue on Adversary might prevent more damage. Found Cruelty, and then now... Could discard a Breach the Multiverse just to help with Collect Evidence. Don't expect any graveyard hate from Monored Aggro, at least not in best of one. Swiss Pierce fine. And another Kumano. Happy to trade for etching if they give us the chance. But our opponent's gonna play with fire instead. Alright, so we take eight. That's a lot. But we should be able to stabilize here. Virtue adversary. Keep up, go for the throats, and next turn combo. Scoundrel can maybe remove a creature in response to the wicked roll. So even with a play with fire in hands, we're not dead. Monstrous rage would be plus three, still one short. And yeah, start from chapter 3. Cast our free breach. And found our scab already, so we're in the clear here. The opponent's squeak can join our team, or we can grab a scoundrel to discard Unraveler to maybe help with the uh, collect evidence. Now if our opponent had instant speed removal for the scab, they maybe could have disrupted us. But for one mana, we don't need to worry about that. So we'll keep milling. Now our opponent could still cast a burn spell in their upkeep, technically. But at 4 life we should be safe. So 
So we'll keep going. 3 plus 7 is an easy one. I guess we could technically also attack for lethal here with all the haste creatures. Which would also be a fun way to do it. And our opponent sees the writing on the wall and concedes, 10 cards remaining, so mill them out. And that does it. Sweet, on to the next one. Okay, we're on the play, and we've got a solid hand. Early interaction, Scholar discards and Raveler, Cruelty on 5. And then we can maybe start by tutoring for Breach the Multiverse, so we've got it in hand. And then turn after, reanimate and Raveler combo off. So we just need to hit our land drops and hope that our opponent doesn't have any meaningful interaction. Turn on Mountain and Epicure, so more likely to be Convoke than Monorad Aggro. I'll hang on to the cutdown for now. I'll take one from Epicure. If we see a bunny corn, we're going to want to take that out instead. Opponent's got the Gleeful Demolition, that's painful. Okay, so it's a lot of tokens now. And we'll cut down the Epicure, I guess. At least the Scholar can technically block. And then discard on Raveler. All our lands enter tapped, so that's potentially a concern. Take the trade. Alright, there's an untapped land now. So we can play sewers to surveil. And breach the multiverse is what we want to draw, so... I may not have to start from chapter 2 anymore. can just immediately reanimate a Raveler and go for it. Although I guess we're kind of lacking in the expensive spell department. So we won't be able to collect evidence for free. Or do we? Because yeah, the cruelty is also going to end up in the graveyard, of course. So we would have 2 plus 3 plus 5 is 10. So yeah, we can still go for it here. Can't really afford to give the opponent any extra turns. So welcome back on Raveler, cast Breach, and yeah, there's definitely a fail rate here, but hopefully we get lucky. And on our side we did not hit what we wanted, but Scholar can maybe find Scab. And then on the opponent's side, I guess Evangelist makes some blockers for us. Find Indulgence. Cast it. And then we want to leave Breach in there. Virtue, Indulgence, Cutdown can go. And there's another Breach, alright, so we can keep going. So now I can get rid of the Breach if I want to, and Raveler's also probably fine, although it is currently our only creature. So let's go with Breach. And that makes 10. And I think we hit our scab. And that should take care of the rest. On the opponent's side, once again, grab an evangelist. Scab sacrifices itself to exploit, so we can get it back with Breach the Multiverse. And then uh, we should be in the clear. Cab and on the opponent's side. Again, doesn't really matter too much. Po 
opponent has 19 cards left, so I need to go through it two more times. Cruelty plus cover-up. And then I guess we could grab a recruiter or two here to just swing for lethal. Which is maybe faster. Yeah, that should do it. GG's. Double battle cry. So yeah, very close one here against the Convoke deck. But uh, yeah, we can sometimes win with damage as well. On to the next one. Okay, we're on the play. And uh, yeah, sure, we can definitely keep this. Tapped March on one, turn to Indulgence, can discard a Rifler. Facing a red green. Typically points towards a more aggressive color combination if they're playing Copper Line Gorge. And there we see Picnic Ruiner, so good target for Virtue Persistence. And discard a Rifler. Yeah, let's just use our sorcery speed removal now. Since it's possible our opponent has some protection spells. And then we want to keep land on top. So yeah, things are looking good. Just need to find our Breach the Multiverse, which we can maybe get with Chapter 2. If we can afford to take a turn off. For now, I guess we could keep up Go for the Throats, or we could just cast Path of Peril. Path of Peril is a bit more mana efficient, so maybe next turn I can both go for the Throat and Indulgence. That works. We're still at 22, but this red-green deck can deal a ton of damage out of nowhere when paired with a double-striking creature. Questing Druid's gonna go digging, finds Iconoclast and Swiss Pier, so two more threats. And opponent goes for Iconoclast, found the land. So, yeah, the absolute safest play would be to pass with Go for the Throat available. Although at 22, even with like triple pump spell, I don't see us dying. And if we can afford to get Breach the Multiverse next turn, we can win. So they got one turn to do some damage. Questing Druid's a pretty innocuous start. Could see Monstrous Rage. Ancestral Anger. That's fine. So we should be safe. And then we've got some expensive mana values in the graveyard for Collect Evidence with Double Cruelty. Opponent did have a Bane Splitter as well, so yeah, gets in for a healthy 8 damage. Get back on Raveler. So I could technically Cruelty get Scab, but we can always do that after casting Breach. And Scholar, and let's say Questing Druid. Alright, discarding Scab now will make it easy. Cast Breach. And get back Scab. be milling the opponent out. Let's 
Slight misclick, meant to uh, get back, breach the multiverse, of course. That's okay, we can course correct with cruelty. Get rid of 3 plus 7 is 10. And get another breach the multiverse. So even through a misclick, we can still combo. Yeah, it can get a little confusing when you're constantly switching between selecting a target for scab as well as collecting evidence. But uh, yeah, we'll get back Breach. Opponent has four cards left, so this is the last time. And if we weren't milling the opponent out, we also had a pretty nice board state going. Okay. Doesn't matter too much what we get back. Pass a turn. And our opponent explodes. Sweet, on to the next one. Okay, we're on the draw, and uh, we've got a keeper lacking some interaction, perhaps, if we're up against aggro. So now we know to look for removal as we're up against a red-white convoke. And scab, I'm happy to put in the graveyard. So turn to indulgence, can discard unraveler, turn three scholar, can maybe discard another one. But yeah, with a turn to gleeful demolition, we're gonna need to find some removal. Turn three Anim Pakal, scary two. We'll immediately make a gnome. Alright, so discard on Rivaler. I found a cutdown, so that can still hit Anim. Yeah, that's gotta be the play, even though we're still in serious trouble if our opponents go to Recruiter or some other Anthem effect. I'll do it now. Even though they could technically have another Anim in hand, which is a reason to wait. But a pump spell would be bad news, and yeah, opponent does have a backup on him. Deadly cover up. Do we get a chance to cast it? Four, five, six, seven. I guess if we draw cut down with scholar, we might survive another turn. We found cut down. Okay. So, discard on Raveler, and then I guess we could just combo next turn with Cruelty as well. Yeah, I guess we're better off just discarding two cards, get rid of the cover-up, and hope we get another turn. And uh, I guess I'll wait on the cutdown now. Opponent goes to attackers. Does this work? It does. Definitely blocking. Take five, okay. Are we still in it? No, we are not. Lightning Helix to close out the game. Well, that's a shame. Next turn we would have been able to combo off. Okay, we're on the play, and uh, our hand doesn't do a whole lot. Now with double cruelty we can kind of sculpt our hands, thanks to chapter two. Gotta go for the throat for interaction, although it's gonna come at a price. So all the life loss from Underground River and Cruelty is also going to add up. So I think I still mulligan. Okay, this is a little bit better. And then what to get rid of? Maybe the cover-up, keep Virtue as either a removal early or an expensive card we can discard with uh, Scholar. Could have maybe waited one more turn on Sewers to get a bit more info on the opponent's deck. Turn on Phoenix Chick. Okay, so next turn we can play Scholar. 
And then we're hoping to draw and discard a Conspiracy on Raveler. Virtue, not a bad answer to Felden, but if our opponent plays a Godric next turn, we might want to keep Virtue to answer it. So yeah, Virtue we're probably going to want to cast. So I can discard the Indulgence, although I could cast it next turn alongside Virtue. And then Cruelty on 5. So I guess that means discard Sewers, discard Scholar instead. Opponent's got an Adversary. If they attack all out, we block Phoenix Chick, expecting Monstrous Rage. So we at least still trade. Okay, I found the Unraveler, perfect. So Virtue take out probably Adversary, since Felden's legendary in case they're holding another one. And then we can still Indulgence end of turn, discard Unraveler. And then we just need to draw land 5 and find Underworld Breach. Possible we can start from Chapter 2, but against Mono Reds, paying 3 life and not affecting the board could be too slow, as we're taking 5 here. Alright, found the Breach and the land, so we've got everything. That was lucky. And then we should have enough stuff in the graveyard here to combo off once Cruelty hits the graveyard. Although Path of Peril also would have been good to buy us more time. Alright, and then we just need to hit a Scab to secure victory. And I think I saw one. And that's enough for a concession. Awesome. On to the next one. Okay, we're on the play, and we've got uh, Keeper. Just missing our Conspiracy Unraveler. So that's what we'll be looking for. Virtue of Persistence. Good removal to have, but we already have Path of Peril. And it's nice to put a 7-drop in the graveyard for Collect Evidence. Indulgence can discard Scab for now. Turn on Epicure, so it looks like another Convoke deck. This time we've got Path to answer potential Gleeful Demolition. For now Warden. Maybe I should main phase the indulgence if her opponent's maybe afraid of a counter spell and doesn't want to commit the demolition yet. Alright, found the unraveler. So that's good to discard. Alright, no third land, that's potentially a concern. But I guess we'll just deal with the warden then. Another epic here. So we're not gonna see demolition. But if they had it, we probably would have seen it last turn. Attack for one. They might be keeping up reinforcements. And yeah, no land is starting to become a pretty big problem. Maybe they go reinforcements into recruiter, we're still taking quite a bit of damage. But then Path of Peril can maybe stabilize us. A Convoked Knight Errant would be more annoying since that doesn't die to Path. The Warden's fine. Okay. So... Most of our lands will do. I guess Sewers is the only exception that enters tapped. And Demolition, alright, so we're going all in here. If we don't find a land for Path, we could be dead next turn. Come 
Come on, land. Okay. Nice reset button. And now we can also use Scab to maybe get back our Path of Peril or Tainted Indulgence. Opponent does have another Demolition, so they must have drawn that. Play Sewers. And then just looking for Land 5 at this point. And there's a Recruiter. And no land. So I guess we go for Scholar. Okay, maybe still hit a land drop, plus maybe a cutdown as well. And then discarding Scab is also good to do. So I'll discard two of those. Now I'm not sure if uh, we're guaranteed to survive here, but uh, we've got a good shot. Another recruiter would be, I guess, Exaxis here. War Leader's Call doesn't quite do it. So we're at three. And then now we can Cruelty, get back on Raveler, and take it from there. Now, with a War Leader's Call on the battlefield, we have to watch out for creatures at instant speed, but at 3 life we should be safe. Plus, we can always win the game with the opponent's Recruiter. Already have Scab in the graveyard, so we're guaranteed to pretty much go through our entire deck. I guess there's a small fail case if we don't have enough mana values. Get back Breach. And then do we have double cruelty? We do. Get back Breach. And then... 3 plus 7 stun. Get back Scab. And we could go for Recruiter now. And then... We might already have enough for Lethal. Don't have to sacrifice anything. And that, uh... We'll do it here, so... Should be a little faster than milling them out. Sweet, on to the next one. Okay, we're on the draw, and uh, yeah, we've got what looks like a keeper. Facing turn one Kumano, so double virtue is going to come in handy. And Dark Slick Shores I'll keep. Adversary, perfect target. Not sure yet if we'll be able to place Caller on 3. Would be the more mana efficient play, so then on 4 we can Indulgence plus Virtue again. But if we see a Godric here, I might need to take it out instead. It's gonna be another Kumano. And a Monstrous Rage. Well, now they're kind of asking for another Virtue. It does throw off my curve slightly, but uh, I think it's worth it still. Back up to 14. And a Phoenix Chick. We can maybe still block with a Scholar. Make sure not to play my land yet, in case we draw a tapped sewers or another Dark Slick Shores, I guess. And discard a Raveler. And then, yeah, all we're missing is Breach the Multiverse to try and combo. 
And maybe some more mana values in the graveyard. Poton goes all out, one card in hand. So if their last card is another Monstrous Rage, we're going to be pretty sad. But I think it's best to block Etching, since Phoenix Jig, they can maybe get back from the graveyard. That trade happened. And just a land left, Path of Peril can clear the board. I think we should go for it, since we don't have all the tools yet for Cruelty to combo. Just a land for the opponents and a concession. Opponent doesn't even want to stick around, but a yeah, indulgence draw to discard. And then if we find some expensive cards, then uh, we can bring back Unraveler and start casting spells for free, ideally finding Breach eventually. Awesome. All right, so we got a nice set of games in here in the best of one meta, and as you can see, the meta is all aggro decks. Monorad aggro, probably the most popular, even though we played against more Convoke decks today. But uh, yeah, having a deck that has early interaction and then eventually a combo finish, I think is a better place to be as opposed to a slightly more explosive combo build of this deck that can maybe go off on turn four with Reenact the Crime, but doesn't have those early tools to survive aggro. So I think this is the way to go forward at least in best of one, but even in best of three, you can easily swap out those spot removal spells with more relevant interaction for those control or combo matchups, add some counter spells or discard effects, maybe have some answers to graveyard hate as well, since you can expect the opponent to be bringing that in, and then you should be good to go there as well. So yeah, I was definitely impressed by the deck, it seems quite competitive, so if you're a fan of combo or reanimator strategies, I can certainly recommend it. So that'll do it for today's gameplay, wanna thank you for watching, Hope you enjoyed, and as always, have a nice day.